Hi everyone, I'm retired meteorologist Pat Prokop here in Savannah, Georgia, and today is Friday, September 26. Interesting things going on in the Southwest Tropical Atlantic Ocean. Two tropical systems developing very close to each other, and usually this doesn't happen, And uh, but it is happening right now. We're seeing these two systems. Of course, we have Hurricane Humberto, uh, to, well to the northeast of the Virgin Islands, and you have this other system called uh, Invest 94L, most likely will become tropical system Imelda over the next 24 to 48 hours, perhaps even up to uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And that's what we're going to talk about because that system could be affecting the southeast United States, particularly South Carolina and possibly North Carolina and possibly Georgia, and possibly northeast portions of Florida. This is going to be a weird system because the steering currents are going to collapse, and that's going to cause the storm to uh, just start meandering around off the coast of Georgia, South Carolina, uh, over the warm waters of the tropical Atlantic Ocean. So let's take a look at the conditions from the National Hurricane Center, first of all. And here is the... Uh, tropical weather outlook. And there you can see uh, Humberto and the remnants of Gabrielle way out to the uh, east for Gabrielle. But Humberto is gaining strength now a, a category, you know, almost a category two hurricane going up to a major hurricane status over the next a uh, few days, and it's uh, undergoing rapid intensification right now. And then we have this Invest number 94L. Uh, that's this system right over in here. And a lot of discussion associated with this coming in from the National Hurricane Center. And uh, it's going to be producing a lot of heavy rains across the Turk and Caicos Islands and also across uh, the Hispaniola area, eastern portions of Cuba, uh, into the southern Bahamas. But then as it begins to move northward, uh, and perhaps northwestward, it'll be spreading that rain uh, over the coastal waters of Georgia and South Carolina. But will that rain move on shore? Well, let's take a look at some of the conditions. First of all, the um, the uh, satellite imagery, I'm going to refresh this just to give us a fresh look and let give it a pause here. There it is, refreshed. And uh, there you have Humberto right over here. And there you have Invest number 94L right over here in the uh, portions of uh, eastern Cuba, the Hispaniola area, Turks and Caicos Islands into the uh, southern Bahama Islands. Then you have this trough across the middle of the country uh, going into the eastern portion of the country. And along that trough, we're seeing showers and thunderstorms now developing across uh, northern Florida, all of Georgia, and South Carolina. Actually, that's some much needed rain. We've only had about a, a tenth of an inch to a quarter of an inch of rain so far this month. Here we are at the 26th day of the month. I've only had 26 hundredths of an inch of rain so far after or that nearly uh, 12 inches of rain, 13 inches of rain throughout the month of August. Anyway, uh, we're seeing that developing, but uh, that's the, uh, the the steering current right now, and uh, that will produce anything that's in this area flow from the southwest to the northeast. But over time, this system here is going to collapse, and the steering currents will be just uh, nothing there whatsoever. So let's take a look at that. So let's take a look at the visible satellite imagery at this time. And there it is from Tropical Tidbits. This is Hurricane Humberto getting well-defined. It's going over very warm waters of the tropical Atlantic Ocean. I'm going to be looking at that in just a minute. But uh, uh, this storm will probably gain 20 to 30 knots in speed over the next uh, 12 to 14, 12 to uh, 24 hours, perhaps up to 30 to 40 uh, not increase in wind speed. So rapid intensification is likely outgoing uh, with this storm and to continue. There you can see the well-defined eye with that. But that storm's not really going to be affecting us and it's not going to be uh, affecting much passing just to the west of Bermuda as it moves on to the northwest. Um, looking at the um, other conditions, this is the Investigation 94L uh, over in the portions of eastern Cuba. Here we have Hispaniola over here. And here is the Turk and Caicos Islands here, southern Bahamas over in this area here. And it seems to be getting better organized at this time. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Obviously, we're going to keep an eye on that. Looking at that water temperature map, I wanted to show you this because the waters are rich in temperatures. And the warmer the water, the more energy uh, supply of fuel for the storm to draw upon. And those temperatures are in the upper 20s, lower 30s Celsius. That's the mid to upper 80s Fahrenheit. 
And uh, right over in here, across where the uh, storm is trying to uh, get a little bit better organized, those water temperatures there are about 86 to 88 degrees Fahrenheit. And then over here off the coast of Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina, here in the Gulf Stream right there, uh, those temperatures are in the upper 20s, uh, which is what, 86, 87 degrees Fahrenheit. And so that's got a lot of uh, energy to, um, to draw upon. And if the storm slowly moves across this area, it'll be a drawing in that energy. Over here where Humberto is, that's over in the very warm waters as well, upper uh, 20s uh, uh, Celsius or mid to upper 80s on the Fahrenheit scale. All right, taking a look at the steering currents right now. And this is the Canadian Meteorological Center model. It seems like this one might have a better handle on the storm at this time, but there's the uh, steering, steering currents. And uh, let's put this into motion. And over time, this is going into the uh, Saturday afternoon, two o'clock. Uh, the trough is beginning to dry up, and there you can see the steering currents are still from the southwest to the northeast. So anything in this vicinity right here will be pushed off and remain east of the coast of the United States. But the uh, storm won't be getting here until about Monday or Tuesday. So let's go to there, and this is on two o'clock Monday afternoon, and you notice. The steering currents are collapsing. Really, nothing uh, dictating a, uh, a strong potential for any motion of any type of direction. Maybe a little bit of a drift to the north northwest, and that's probably what the storm's going to do. But uh, this system continues to collapse and doesn't really do much. So the storm is expected basically to meander uh, across the coastal waters of Georgia and South Carolina for a few days. So let's take a look at the models themselves. And here we got the uh, GFS model the uh, U.S. model, and um, lately it's not been the best model for tropical storms, but it seems to be getting a little bit better uh, at, at the uh, this system here, but let's put it into motion. There you can see the uh, storms uh, continuing to develop. There is Humberto right over here, very close to uh, which most likely will become Imelda, and uh, this is as of um, sunrise on Monday. And it has a very strong tropical storm, perhaps a weak Category 1 hurricane off the coast of Florida and east of uh, uh, Georgia into south of, uh, or south of the South Carolina coast. All right, continuing the motion, there we can see uh, by sunset on Monday, it's approaching the coast and moving on shore in the South Carolina, just about all of the South Carolina coast, southern North Carolina coast. Uh, just aff affecting a little bit of the Georgia coast. Now, remember, with uh, uh, hurricanes, the most active side is the north and the northeast quadrant, and the least active side is the west and the uh, southwest quadrant. Uh, there you have it right there. So if, if this be the case, the uh, Georgia wouldn't see that much uh, uh uh, problems associated with this storm, you're going to see some activity and, and, and some issues, but most of the issues will be associated with the northern and the eastern portion of this storm, which puts it into South Carolina and North Carolina. All right, it's continued to motion, and it drives it on shore right there uh, on Tuesday uh, early morning uh, to around sunrise, moves it on shore as a potential Category 1 hurricane. There is Humberto uh, moving off to the east of us and moving off to the north as the uh, uh, and Imelda moves further inland, dumping heavy rains across South Carolina and portions of the Savannah River area. Um, the Humberto moves off to the east of us, west of Bermuda. There's Bermuda right there. And um, so that's the GFS model. But let's take a look at another one because this is not set in stone here. The GFS has been having its issue. The Canadian model has been doing fairly well. So let's take a look at that and putting it into motion here. And there we can see uh, going into um, Sunday sunset it is off the coast of um, Florida, southeast Florida, and the, off the extreme northern portions of the Bahamas. And then going further in time, going into two o'clock Monday afternoon, there it is east of the coast of Florida, southeast of Georgia coast, and south of the South Carolina coast, a little bit slower than what the GFS has uh, been, been indicating. And then it ramps it up to, it looks like a, 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 a cat, at least a category one hurricane as it pushes it off to the north and then begins to swing back, to, well, 
it just loses. It's, it just spins around off the coast of Georgia, then slides, uh, slides eastward back into the Atlantic. And then it's, well, it changes its mind, comes on back toward the northern portions of South Carolina into southeastern portions of the uh, North Carolina into Virginia and the Dalmarva Peninsula, dumping heavy rains out there. So it, with this scenario, not much for the uh, northeast Florida or all of southeastern Georgia to be associated with this. But Let's take a look at another one. Um, the um, ECMWF, the you know, European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecast, that model usually is fairly accurate. Uh, lately, it's been pretty good. So let's take a look and see what it has to say for itself. Uh, this is as of uh, Monday um, at 2 o'clock in the morning. So let's advance it into 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, there it is right there. It has it off the middle coast of Florida as a developing uh, system, perhaps a strong tropical storm at this phase. And then continuing uh, with the motion here, we go into uh, two o'clock on um, Tuesday, and it puts it just on the coast of South Carolina near Charleston, the, the core of the storm itself, uh, the eye or the center portion of rotation just off the coast of near Charleston, Myrtle Beach, that area there. Uh, perhaps just north of Charleston. Charleston's right here. But uh, again, keeps it off the Georgia uh, area. But let's continue in time. What happens? The steering currents again collapse and watch what happens here. Uh, it begins to just stall and then meanders down the coast back toward Beaufort, South Carolina, then off the coast of uh, uh, Tybee and Savannah and um, the upper portions of southeastern Georgia. And then it slips back into the Gulf Stream, and then it slips back to the west-northwest, and then comes back on shore right around the Savannah River entrance. And this is along about Thursday at sunrise, and in the process would be dumping tremendous amounts of rain across a large portion of South Carolina into the central Savannah River area and into the upper portions of southeastern Georgia and eastern Georgia uh, and portions of southeastern Georgia. So keeping an eye on this, uh, this would be uh, quite devastating for portions of uh, the uh, southeast United States. And then it continues to meander across portions of Georgia as a tropical low pressure system and uh, potential rains could be falling associated with that. Let's take a look at some of the forecast tracks, perhaps uh, the average uh, tracks, the um, uh, uh, global models, the potential. There you can see it. Basically, the, the spaghetti chart is spread out uh, from the southeastern Georgia around the Brunswick area, St. Simon's, Jekyll Island area, all the way up to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, anywhere in between that area. Uh, but um, a, a better view is what we call the ensemble forecast. And these are the ensemble forecast. And um, this one's based on the GFS. So it's the global uh, uh, ensemble forecast system, but uh, uh, it's also based on other uh, models as well. And the ensembles uh, take uh, different pictures, I guess, of the uh, programs, uh, the model run, and deviates it a little bit by uh, changing the parameters a little bit and gives you a better idea of where uh, things could possibly go by probabilities. And there you have it again, a tremendous spaghetti chart. Uh, but it is focusing on the, the South Carolina coastal areas, a little bit into Georgia and, and a little bit into North Carolina, one, one into north, northeast portions of Florida. And then you have the other ensemble um, over here, whoops, right there. And this is the uh, uh, Global Ensemble Prediction Service, and uh, it has it mostly staying offshore uh, off the coast of Southeast United States, but then affecting the southern portions of North Carolina going into the Virginia area. This one's kind of like based on the Canadian Meteorological Center uh, forecast uh, system. So uh, how much rain? Well, let's take a look at the um, uh, ensemble forecast rain amounts uh, uh, for the next several days. And uh, looking at this and putting it into motion, there you can see the rains start to come up the coast uh, off the coast of Florida and uh, Georgia, South Carolina, as expected with that storm moving northward uh, uh, east of the coast of Florida and, south, and Georgia and then approaching South Carolina. And there you can see the heavier rains moving basically into the South Carolina area and North Carolina area, getting tremendous amounts of rain associated with that. But again, this is potential um, 
where the storm goes. Uh, this, is, I think, is based mostly on the CMC model or the Canadian model. So got to keep an eye on this system. Now, locally, though, uh, this afternoon into the evening hours, we're beginning to see the chances for showers and thunderstorms developing across Georgia and South Carolina. We need that rain. As, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we've been dry, only a quarter of an inch of rain in some locations so far this month. And this is the uh, going into the fourth week of the month right now. But we are seeing some showers and thunderstorms developing. And further to the south, looking at the Valdosta radar, we're seeing even more rain there. So uh, yeah, the rain chances tonight are gonna be up to, uh, the day and tonight are up to 80% probability in our area. And on my webpage, savannapat.name, you get all the great weather information and astronomy data. You know, yesterday in the video, I showed you this uh, uh, picture of Saturn. You can get more information just by clicking on that and going into my Heavenly Backyard Astronomy page and uh, looking at the planet Saturn and the uh, uh, cycles. A lot of people like this graphic right here, the, uh, the cycles of the rings of Saturn. And, but anyway, it's all there. And if you want to watch the video, it's right there. Just click on that and it'll take you into the YouTube video. But anyway, uh, that's available for you there. But the forecast, looking for a pretty good chance for some rain. 80% today, 70% on Saturday. Sorry, it's the weekend, I know. 40% uh, on Sunday and then back to 60% on Monday. It all depends on where uh, this uh, 94L invest or if you want to go potential Imelda. Uh, it was funny the way I pronounced it yesterday. Anyway, if you want to see, okay. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, that's up all in question. We don't know what's going to happen, but um, just uh, uh, smoothing things out. The key here, the temperatures will be down somewhat in from the lower 90s we saw the last couple of days into the 80s, lower 80s Monday, perhaps even, even upper 70s by Thursday and Friday of next week. So, uh, I'll keep you posted on this system. Uh, it's, 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 it's very active and could be potential where it goes. If it stays offshore, we'll miss uh, uh, it all and it moves off to the east-northeast. But if it moves onshore, well, we'll have to keep an eye on that as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.